Welcome back. In part three of this lecture on cognitive disengagement syndrome, or the other attention disorder than ADHD, I'm going to take a look at the differences between CDS and ADHD in the kinds of disorders that coexist with them and the types of impairments that we often see associated with these conditions. So let's start our PowerPoint once again. And let's take a look at comorbidity or the coexistence of other psychological disorders with these two attention disorders. Comorbidity with oppositional defiant disorder and then later conduct disorder is frequently associated with ADHD. About 45% or more of the individuals will develop conduct disorder uh, or oppositional disorder. Some figures show that it's even higher than that. Uh, up to 65 to 80% of children with ADHD within two years develop ODD. In contrast, CDS shows virtually no comorbidity with those two disruptive behavior disorders. And indeed, in some studies with appropriate statistical controls, the correlation between CDS symptoms and ODD or CD is negative, meaning the more symptoms of cognitive disengagement you have, the less likely you are to go on to develop those disruptive disorders, even less than typical individuals do. So that's a substantial finding. It's called a double dissociation. The relationship of something to each of these two disorders goes in the opposite direction. So it's a strong argument that we're dealing here with two distinct conditions, albeit ones that can overlap, rather than simply one condition being a subtype or a proxy for the other. Now, CDS has shown a stronger relationship to internalizing symptoms, symptoms of depression, anxiety, neuroticism more generally, but in particular, the link to depression seems to be a rather robust one. Uh, the link with anxiety, a little less so, inconsistent, but probably still there. And that's even after controlling for any overlap that CDS has with the inattentive symptoms of ADHD. So uh, CDS symptoms in adults increase the risk for both disorders uh, and also could account for the well-known overlap of ADHD with those other disorders, particularly with depression, because studies now indicate that if you control for the CDS symptoms, then there's little, if any, relationship of ADHD to major depression, depression that is, or depressive symptoms. This likely arises due to the linkage of CDS with types of ruminative or obsessive thinking, as I described in the initial lecture on this topic. More closely linked than ADHD to social withdrawal is CDS. It's linked again with, as we said, more of a reserved, reticent, apprehensive, even withdrawn quality to their social interactions, as well as being linked to anxiety, what is called conflict to shyness, and even sleep difficulties. So uh, it's really CDS that might be accounting for these relationships more than ADHD does. Now, children with CDS and adults are no more likely to have bipolar disorder than control children or typical individuals in these studies. And that's unlike ADHD, where there is some relationship of ADHD to bipolar disorder. Research shows that CDS is equally as likely as ADHD to be associated with certain motor learning and other disorders such as motoric impairment, spelling disorders, and writing disorders. So both of them show a higher comorbidity for those developmental problems. As or more likely is CDS to be associated with autistic spectrum disorders. Now, ADHD is certainly linked to autism, as we've talked about in my other lectures. But research shows that 64% or more 
of kids on the spectrum have medium or high symptoms of CDS. Indeed, it's possible that some of the attribution of ADHD as a comorbidity to autism is really being driven more by this other attention disorder that isn't assessed in autism spectrum research very much and certainly seems to be the prevailing attention deficit in autism spectrum. That's not to say that ADHD isn't there either, but that some of what we're attributing as ADHD comorbidity could easily be comorbidity with CDS instead. It's just being mislabeled. Certainly, the degree of CDS has been linked to greater social impairments and more internalizing symptoms, even among individuals with autism spectrum. So uh, CDS is contributing, I think, important explanatory power here with regard to why certain disorders are linking up with other disorders. Uh, and as we saw right on that last line that went zipping by there, 53% of kids with CDS in my research had no comorbidity at all versus about 39% of those with ADHD only. Notice that if kids have both CDS and ADHD, only 25% of them are free of comorbidity. Or, to put it another way, 75% or more will have at least one other psychological or psychiatric disorder. Now, personality has not been well studied in CDS, but the couple of studies that exist in children and adults seem to suggest that CDS is linked more to a greater sensitivity to punishment and to shyness and fear in children, whereas ADHD is linked more to reward-seeking and risk-taking behavior than we see in CDS. In adults, we see a similar pattern. Adults who had high CDS symptoms showed higher activation of their behavioral inhibition system in the brain, had greater neuroticism, and showed higher behavioral activation system activity than was seen in ADHD kids, but particularly activation of the behavioral inhibition system, which usually activates when there is the belief that there is impending punishment or adverse consequences are about to occur. Now, in school and in academic subjects in particular, we find that both CDS and ADHD impair school performance to about an equal percentage. So many CDS children are having trouble in school. But we often see that the problem reported in ADHD is one of productivity, amount of work done. ADHD kids just don't get a lot of work done. What little work they do is probably accurate, at least reasonably accurate. In contrast, what we are hearing about CDS kids is that they get the work done. It's not a productivity disorder, but it's not very accurate. They're missing important details in processing the problem and therefore making lots more mistakes than other kids. Now, these findings aren't definitive, just suggestive, but they suggest that the nature of academic impairment differs between the two conditions. Now, the slower sluggish dimension, the motor dimension of CDS, seems to be most related to deficient academic skills. That's kind of interesting, because in ADHD, it's the inattentive dimension that is linked to worse school performance and poor academic achievement. A couple of studies suggested that CDS was associated with more difficulties with mathematics achievement than it was with the other learning and academic subjects. Uh, and that math ability was in these children being more impaired by their uh, daydreamy, spacey confusion, the attention dimension than we see in ADHD. But again, the question mark is there because uh, it's just not certain. There just isn't enough research to show that. Uh, CDS was found in a number of studies to make a unique contribution to school impairment compared to the contribution made by ADHD. So they're not duplicates of each other, causing the same degree of difficulty that we would see. 
And as this line shows, CDS symptoms contribute over time to student-teacher conflict because the student simply isn't getting the work done accurately, and that can lead to conflict with the teacher, especially it was found in girls, and that this was uniquely associated with CDS rather than explained by other disorders. Now, ADHD contributes to conflict with teachers as well, but that's more through behavioral disruption than it is through academic accuracy, the completion of assignments. <clears throat> Another study found that CDS contributed unique variants to motivational problems in completing homework, independent of the motivational difficulties that ADHD was contributing. So all of this is to say that both disorders are very impairing in school, but may be doing so through different pathways, uh, different routes, if you will. Now, when we look at family and social functioning, and there's not, again, an awful lot of research here, we find that parents of CDS children report very low levels of parenting stress. It's mainly associated with getting school homework done and to some extent with their social withdrawal or shyness around others. In the case of ADHD, parenting stress levels are very high, nearly if not as high as is reported in families with children on the autism spectrum. And the parenting stress appears to be ubiquitous across many different situations uh, relative to what we see in CDS children. As I said, in CDS children, parents are primarily concerned with school performance. Social withdrawal does seem to characterize CDS children. They report being more isolated, uh, less likely to initiate interactions with others, and perhaps a little more socially anxious. Whereas with ADHD children, as you know, it's a disruptive disorder associated with a lot of talking, emotion, disruption of other people's activities, sometimes reactive aggression, things that we are not likely to see in conjunction with CDS. So, uh, and it was found that it was the ADHD symptoms and especially ODD symptoms that were most likely to be related in ADHD children to school, or excuse me, to peer rejection, to being excluded from the peer group. Uh, and that's not the case with CDS children, where we see that they're principally more overlooked because of their withdrawal and lack of initiation of social interactions. So both disorders contribute to social impairments, but seem to be doing so in very different ways. Even in children with ADHD or autism spectrum, CDS is making additional contributions to impairment. Now here's a study that I did of a national sample of children looking at 15 different domains of impairment as you see across here. And again, comparing my four groups of typical children, those only having SCT, those only having ADHD, and of course some children had both. Now the first thing to notice is that the children with both disorders were far more impaired than the children with either of the two attention disorders, indicating that the disorders, when they coexist, are additive. They don't duplicate each other. They don't substitute for each other. It's yet more, ex I think, evidence that CDS is a unique disorder from ADHD, even if it co-occurs with it. When it does, it adds further to impairment. Notice down here the exclamation marks. Those are the domains where ADHD was much more impairing than CDS. On the other hand, our evidence showed that CDS was more impairing than ADHD in sports performance. It's kind of interesting, but it does suggest that spacing out, daydreaming, and disengaging from the field of play when you are engaged in a sport like baseball or basketball or hockey or soccer, that kind of disengagement is even more impairing than simply the overactivity and distractibility of the ADHD child, which sometimes is not a problem, even in sports situations. So ADHD does contribute far more to impairment than does CDS, or what previously was called SCT. So in that sense, ADHD is a more 
impairing disorder, a more pervasively impairing disorder. But on the other hand, CDS was impairing. I'm not going to go through the details of this slide. It's really more for my professional colleagues and other researchers. Uh, but suffice to say that, as I said, ADHD is much more impairing. But CDS impairs also, but in very select ways more than does ADHD. This is a study of CDS in adults, <clears throat> essentially looking again at 15 different domains of functioning. Uh, and here what we found is that CDS was much more impairing in work, in educational settings, and as you can see here, excuse me, during sexual behavior with another than was ADHD. I, we found that to be surprising. ADHD is a very impairing disorder in the workplace and in the school setting. But this study showed that while that is true, CDS was even more impairing there, whereas ADHD was more impairing in some of the other circumstances that you see here. Again, it's a very busy slide. I don't want to go into it in uh, excessive detail. But again, we're seeing differences in the profile of impairments. Now, one of my former colleagues, when I was at the Medical University of South Carolina, came to me and he said, you know, your CDS, the symptoms sound a lot like hypersomnia, daytime sleepiness. H have you thought about looking at that overlap and whether that's really what you're evaluating here? So luckily, studies have been done by Josh Langberg, Stephen Becker, and others to show that no, CDS although it overlaps to some extent with hypersomnia. And as you see here with ADHD, which also overlaps with hypersomnia, these are three different conditions nonetheless. And where there's overlap, it reflects more comorbidity, not equivalency, not the fact that they're synonymous with each other. That was very important for us to show. Okay, well, that's part three. Now, coming up in part four, I'm going to talk about differences in developmental course and in causation in people with cognitive disengagement syndrome. So I hope you'll join me for part four. Be well.